Hi everyone, Naka Onilafor here to make the invisible visible. And uh, recently Michelle Obama stated um, that she doesn't believe America would have been ready if she had have worn her natural black hair when she was first lady. And my question to Michelle Obama is, um, is it that America is not ready? Or is it that maybe perhaps she is not comfortable with her natural black hair? Let me also start by saying, I really like Michelle Obama, okay? Those two things are very true. So uh, really quickly, I'm the author of My Own Gaze, Memoir of an Invisible Black Woman. You can get your copy on amazon.com. Also, you can go to my website to learn more. If you go to the description of this video, you can get more information about my book and my website and my services. Speaking of my services, in 2023, I will be launching a business. I will be consulting folks who want to be content creators. I will be um, consulting those who want to self-publish books, as well as coaching. I'm currently a coach right now, so I will be expanding my coaching services um, and also public speaking. So if you have an event and you want to book someone, go to my website and um, fill out the contact form so that uh, I can uh, get your information and learn more about what you want and we can work together. So, all right, let's get into this. So. Like I said, Michelle Obama recently made some comments in the media uh, about, and, and, and she actually has a book coming out, or excuse me, the book is already out, The Light We Carry. And in the, I don't know if it's in the book or if she just said this in an interview, but she mentioned that America is not ready or would not have been ready for her to reveal her natural black hair. And again, that was when she was in office um, or when, you know, her and her husband <laughs> were in office uh, when she was the first lady. Now, I just want to kind of, I want to push back a little bit. And, and I just want to start by saying, I really like Michelle Obama. And I know that most black women like her. Uh, we rarely disagree with anything Michelle Obama says. Like Michelle Obama rarely does or says anything that I disagree with. So I just want to get that out the way, right? Like me having these views in no way means that I don't respect or like or appreciate Michelle Obama. But I don't have to agree with everything someone says just, just because I like them. And I kind of feel like a lot of my opinions are unpopular, which is one of the reasons why I started this channel. So I didn't really see a lot of pushback to what she said online. Um, so I decided to make this video. So again, you know, I just wanna start with a personal story. Um, to be honest with you all, most of the pushback that I received over the course of my life regarding my natural black hair has come from black people. Um, there was a time where I wore my hair in an afro, you know, it was very, I have 4C hair. And so it, it was a tight, very tightly coiled afro, right? Like my hair was long, like to my shoulders, but it, you couldn't tell because as, as we know, they're shrinkage. And I remember when I first started wearing my hair that way, um, you know, again, most of the compliment, now mind you, this was like in college, a lot of the compliments I received were from white people, to be honest with you. Black people, you know, some of them may have, you know, may have possibly complimented my hair, but then I also got questions. I also got comments like, oh, wow, you're so brave to wear your hair like that from, from black folks. Um, I got looks, I got, you know, it wasn't always positive. There was some curiosity when nothing is wrong with that. But from white people, I got, wow, I love your hair, it looks amazing. Now, I'm not trying to let white people off the hook because first of all, the issues that we have with our hair, I believe doesn't start with us. So I'm not letting white people off the hook. In, in many ways, we have these issues as black women with hair, with our hair, because of white people, because of, you know, you have to bring it all the way back to slavery and Jim Crow and all the opportunities that black people and black women in particular uh, couldn't, get because their hair looked a certain way or because they looked a certain way. So I'm not, I'm not letting white people hop off the hook, but I, I am holding black people accountable to the fact that, you know, the majority of criticism oftentimes about our hair comes from our own communities. You know, I, I talked in, in other videos about uh, high school and, and how I, I was one of very few black women who did not have my hair chemically processed. I've actually never had my hair chemically processed as far as a perm. The only chemical processing I've done has been um, 
dot like dyeing my hair and so high school was a nightmare for me because of that and I went to school with predominantly black people right so these were not white people who were terrorizing me because my hair was not straight and and silky smooth these these were black people and I heard everything and I got teased and like again you know it it I, it didn't make me, you know, I still didn't go out and, 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 well, I would straighten it as far as like the hot comb and, you know, stuff like flat irons, but it's, I still didn't go out and permit. But my point here is I cannot remember one time in my life where a white person, you know, said something about my hair and, and, and it was, you know, hurtful to the point where I, it made me say, oh, you know, you guys are not, not ready for this. Like, I do believe that black people oftentimes are the ones not ready for the natural black hair. Because I do believe that when I wore my hair in a tightly coiled Afro, I know for a fact that it made certain black people uncomfortable. Whether it's because they don't have the quote unquote courage to, to, to step out like that, step out of the house like that. Or quite frankly, as I heard out of a, a black person's mouth before, they personally think that I would be more attractive if my hair was straight. Like I've literally had particularly a black man, a black man and probably more than one say that to me, that I would look better if my hair was straight. So my question to Michelle Obama is, well, you know, well, two questions. One is, are you, when you say that America is not ready for your natural black hair, is that black America or is that white America? And then again, my second question is, Michelle Obama, are you comfortable wearing your natural black hair? Like, how do you feel? Because see, oftentimes, you know, if we are not comfortable in our own skin with wearing our hair natural, then that uh, radiates to the outside world. People can tell when you're not confident and comfortable. And so going back to me, my experience in college with me wearing my hair, like I said, tightly coiled, 4 C, like it looks short, you know, of course, I didn't like the fact that people thought I cut my hair. Or they, I didn't like the fact that people thought that my hair was just short because it wasn't. But I was at a point where I was just ready. I, I was tired of flat iron, ironing it. I was tired of using a hot comb and, you know, doing all these things. I just wanted to be free of that. And so me wearing my hair in its natural state was, you know, I, I embraced it. And, and so when I would walk through the world and people would make comments, whether negative or positive, it didn't sway me either way because I was comfortable. So why I'm pushing back on what Michelle Obama said, even though I understand it, and on, to some level, I can see what she's saying. I'm like, I do think that if she had worn her hair natural as the first lady, it would have caused conversation and questions and curiosity. So what? In fact, I think that that's probably what we needed. Like, even though her whole point is, well, I didn't want to, cause conversation because I didn't want to take away from other real issues that you know obviously we have as a nation however hair is a is an issue <laughs> you know like I, I mean I hate to I mean is it as a you know a big as uh, is is hair as big of a deal as like war and you know folks being hungry and like homelessness no but hair is an issue it is a real issue and it's more so an issue for black folks, black men and black women, right? Like black women in terms of how we style our hair and what kind of choices we, we make. But black men, it's like, you you know, kind of like who are you choosing to date and, and compliment and, and, you know, how like a, per, like a woman's hair can impact, sadly, a woman's hair can impact whether or not a guy even chooses to sh express interest in her. So I feel like it's just a missed opportunity. Like Michelle Obama had that platform and I would have loved to see her Afro. I would have loved to see her in braids. I would have loved to see, I don't know, you know, if she has whatever, 4C hair or whatever, but whatever number hair texture she has, I would have loved her to use that as an opportunity to showcase this is how the hair grows out of my head. Yes, I am the first lady. And quite frankly, you, you need to accept it. You need to accept the way I look naturally. So this is the problem. You, I mean, it, it just goes back to, and it highlights 
the inherent problem that we have, you know, as black folks. Because you have a woman who has the highest position, arguably the highest position in the nation. You are the first, you know, at that time, she was the first lady. I mean, no, because if you wear an Afro, no one's going to like, you know, dethrone you, you know, Barack Obama is not going to divorce you because you wore an Afro. So you, you know that you wearing your hair natural, like it's not going to take away your position, but yet, so yet, so you have this high position and this high platform and you still assimilate, still assimilate, still accommodate, still try to make white people comfortable. Now I get it. I understand that this is the dilemma of black of black society of black america like we we all are constantly trying to navigate this i get it i'm not trying to say in any way shape or form that oh well you know you need to just i don't know <laughs> have this big afro and wear dashiki and like go all in you know just no i'm not i mean i'm not saying that i do think that there's a uh, some strategy that sometimes you have to use and perhaps that's what she was speaking to but I feel like when it comes to the hair conversation, like somebody has to be the one who's going to step out there and say, absolutely not. On this issue right here, I'm going to stand up and I'm wearing my hair natural and I don't care what anybody has to say. And no, I'm not here to make you comfortable. This is my job is not to make America, white or black America, America comfortable. My job is to be Michelle Obama, to be me. And so the fact that, again, you have, I think that's, I think that says a lot that someone like a Michelle Obama with all of the power and all of the authority and all the, the, the entire platform that she had still feels, still in many ways is functioning like a black woman who, you know, is a secretary at a, you know, small nonprofit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you would think that as the first lady, you have the, now you really have the authority to be yourself. You really can just be like, yeah, I'm showing up as me. Whatever you want to do with your natural black hair, you should be able to do it. But that is not the case. Michelle Obama still felt like I have to assimilate. I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. I don't want to take away from the real issues in society by wearing. Why would you? And, and, and I get what she, she was saying. But like, isn't that sad that her wearing she isn't that sad that her wearing her natural hair would actually take away from quote unquote real issues. Like, what does that say? That lets you know that that your hair is extremely political. Like how you wear your hair, how how we as black women wear our hair is extremely political. I don't care what anybody says. If people try to say, well, no, it's, it's just hair and you know, it's not a big deal. No, it clearly is a big deal. So you, you know, you have two terms where again, I mean, she her hair was straight for like eight years, and and you know probably beyond that. And it's just now, years, many years later, that she's coming out and wearing braids, and I guess kind of wearing her hair the way she always wanted to. But that is crazy to me. That's I mean, I just think that, and then the fact that we all accept it, like it's status quo. Like okay, yep, we get it, Michelle. We we understand why you chose not to wear your natural hair. So so the message is like keep assimilating keep doing what you know what what we what white people so to speak want us to do keep you know like like just just keep doing it and at what point is somebody going to be the one to step up and stand out and say I am putting my foot down and I am not going to continue to hide who I really am so I think that's pretty much all I have to say for the most part about this topic. You know, I just think that we ultimately need to force, just like we forced, you know, the sit-ins and just like, you know, all the many laws that were put in place because black people stood up and, and said, no, we're putting our foot down, right? We need to, the hair thing, I think is going to have to be one of those things. We're going to have to force people and not just white people all people to accept it stop bending and, and, and accommodating and being like oh you know and again we it's going to start with we we have to be comfortable ourselves and i think that that's the big problem here we have to be comfortable 
with our hair, with our features, with whatever, with our culture, we have to be comfortable. And if we're not comfortable, then we're not gonna be able to st step out there and be confident enough for anyone to take us serious, for anyone to accept it. You know, the Crown Act exists in many ways because of a very sad reality. You know, the Crown Act um, being that, you know, was put in place to, to protect black women in, in, in many ways in the workplace from being discriminated against for wearing, you know, our natural hair. And the fact that that exists is like, it says a lot. Um, so, so really quick, you know, and again, I probably should have said this at the beginning, but you know, this whole thing about, you know, whether or not you should straighten your hair for work. Like if you're trying to get a job or if you have a job and you want to maintain that job, what do you do? Do you straighten your hair? Do you, you know, give into that? And, and, and maybe your hair is already straight, which is totally fine. But if your hair is not straight, do you accommodate to fit, I guess, what you believe that, you know, uh, white society wants you to, or even not even white society, just whoever's doing the hiring, do you fit that mold by straightening your hair? Do you continue to keep your hair straight just to keep that corporate job? Or do you show up as your natural black self with your natural black hair and see what happens? And if someone doesn't want to hire you because your hair is in locks or um, kinky, then that's on them, you know? And so I think a lot of this goes back to us, you know, wanting these opportunities. Some of it goes back to black excellence. Some of it goes back to us, you know, obviously I know we need money. I know we want these corporate jobs. I know we, but like, is it worth it? Like if somebody won't hire you or is discriminating against you because your hair is a certain texture, why do you want to work there? Why do you even want to do that? And this is not Michelle Obama. I'm not saying this from Michelle Obama. I'm talking now to just re regular everyday folks, you know, so really think about that. And I've heard black women over the years say that, well, you know, I, I got to straighten my hair. I got to put on this wig to get this job. But is that really what should we, is that really what we should be doing? So comments, um, you know, in the comment section with your opinion on this. And uh, I realize that I've been filming a lot in my car. I hope to stop doing that soon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, comments um, and let me know your thoughts on this topic. And as always, stay tuned for more. Bye.